All right. Okay. So today what we're going to talk about is setting up your Instagram page or your Facebook page or your Facebook private group as a brand. Um, and I want you guys to think about a brand that you know of, right? And so I think first and foremost, like what's a brand that you really like? And one thing I want you to go do this week is go check out their page and just see kind of that. I think they will, they'll have a lot of what we're going to talk about today. Um, and also think about influencers that you really enjoy following. So if there's somebody that you really love following because they offer, um, recipes or because they offer travel um, inspiration. If you go and look at their page from the very moment that you get there, you know basically what they're all about. From the name that they've called themselves, whether it's just their name or they've picked something that relates to their brand, and then what they look at is on Instagram in nine boxes. So a marketing term we always use for anything digital is above the fold. And what that means is what you see before you have to scroll. So if it's on a desktop or on a mobile device, really think about what it is that the person is going to see right when they first get there. So if we are looking at Instagram, um, it's going to be your profile picture, your bio, whatever you have in highlights. And granted, you only see three here before you really have to scroll. But for the most part, people will look at your nine boxes. Um, similarly on Facebook or on a Facebook group, um, I'll just go for the sake of, so on my private, this is my personal Facebook, but you can see a cover photo, a photo of myself, and then like some bio stuff. I mean, you really have to scroll pretty far on Facebook before you get to a post. So it's just important to think about like what people are seeing when they first come to your page. Um, and that's what we want to think about because that's going to help us set up what our brand is and how we can communicate that to people when they first get to the page. So for your page and for the sake of this example, we're, we're going to really focus on um, Instagram because I think that um, Instagram is where we really need to think about building a brand because Instagram is where we are going to connect with more people we don't know, right? Facebook is still really going to be always a warmer market. It is people you know, like, and trust, um, and who know, like, and trust you. I personally don't like adding strangers to my Facebook. I like to add people to Facebook once I have connected with them. But since becoming a coach, I will say I add a lot more people to Facebook than I used to. Like I kind of, I kind of feel like I'm like the Lindsay that when I first got Facebook, that was like, literally like I would meet somebody at like a party and be like, can I Facebook friend you? <laughs> like I am, I'm now that person again. Like when I meet like a mom at a mom's event or if we're at, a, if I'm at a park and with my kids and I, I start talking to another mom, I'll be like, Hey, can I Facebook, can I Facebook friend you? Um, because no, we're not like friends yet, but like they're local. Right. And so even if it's not a beach body thing, it's like, mine as well grow my tribe. Um, I do not keep my Facebook public. Um, I did it for a little while. But again, I use Facebook and Instagram very differently. We're going to talk about that today, though. So I really keep Facebook as, as more of a, a private vessel. I don't know if that's right or wrong. You'll listen, to, you'll listen to trainings from other coaches who have booming businesses from Facebook, and they treat Facebook more like Instagram. So I think it just is up to each individual person. And again, I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on. But Instagram, I think, is where I have had a lot of success with that cold market um, and just meeting new people. And I love Instagram because I, I frankly love meeting new people and people on Instagram want to meet new people. 
people on Facebook don't really want to meet people that they don't know is what I have found. Um, so, so we'll talk about Instagram and the brand pillar. So my Instagram is public. Um, but again, I do know very successful coaches who have kept their Instagram private. So I don't think that it is black or white, but I think you just have to think through how people are coming to your page if it's on private. And if you want to do that, let's have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and think through how you could do that. Um, but like I said, I, I did mine public so that anybody can come to it. And I'm not really sharing anything on Instagram that I wouldn't care if everybody saw. Um, so think about who you are as a person, not as a beach body coach, but as a person. And I uh, had a, an amazing training at Procter and Gamble where they said, basically you can be five things at any one time um, in life before you get overwhelmed. And so in that example, it was like, you know, you can be a really good, um, like, family members, like daughter and sister. You can be a really good mom. You can be a really good wife. You can be a really good career person. You can be a really good coach. You can be really good at your own health. You can be really good at a hobby. You can see how I have way more than five, right? On any given day, you only get five. So if career is always going to be first and mom is always going to be one, and I think your own health should be one, that really frees up two spots on any given day that you can flex. And I know that maybe wife should be in there, but I think my husband gets it. <laughs> he, 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 he has to take care of himself <laughs> sometimes and like you know like I just have some days there are just other things but I don't think it's cut or dry like I don't think you have to pick five things for a month or for a week I really think you can think about what those are day to day so that's just like a little life tip of like the whole point was to say you know if you're going to be really focused on your career and you're going to be focused on your family and you need to work out every day and you want to have a healthy lifestyle you have to be really choiceful about those next two things. I like to take that, those five things and actually put them to my Instagram as well. So I think about what are the five things that I want people to see when they first land on my page. So for me, I want them to see um, a career or a like working mom tip I want them to see that fitness is important to me. I want them to take away something about nutrition. I want them to see mom survival. Like that is in my name, right? So they are going to see like chaotic mom life and some sort of humor um, are kind of like my five things. So take a few minutes and just think about, you know, if, if you were kind of like summing up what you would want somebody to come into contact with you on social media and be like, that's what she's all about. What are those five things? And Audrey, I might put you on the spot and have you talk through this with me. Sure, let's do it. So what, what do you think could be some of your things, even if you haven't gotten to five yet? Um, so I actually wrote nine things that I would want to be uh, seen on my nine tiles for Instagram. Great, I love that, yep. Now I'm putting numbers to the five most important ones. So I would say career. Okay. Um, health and fitness. Um, family, including friends and the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm hesitating between number four, between travel and self-care slash self-love. And then cooking would probably be my last one. 
Okay. So I think that, um, so having spoken with you m- many times, travel's got to be one of your things, whether that's a trip that you're on or a trip that you're dreaming of, or just that like wanderlust, because that's just such a part of why you do everything, right? Your job, everything. Then I love the like family being inclusive of friends. So kind of like, we could call it like travel, your social network, um, Then you said um, health and fitness, which I think nutrition is a part of and cooking. And I think self-love. Yeah. And wellness. Yeah. And then what were your other two? I'm sorry. I should have written them down. Uh, No, those were were all the ones that I had. So the thing is that with with my job, I associate travel as well. Yeah. So that's why... I think that that could be a little different though, because your career is really important to you. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love it when you talk about how much you love your job Mm -hmm. um, and about how rewarding it is and what you love about it. And so I think that you definitely want to keep that a part of, of what you talk about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So travel, um, social network, uh, career, health and fitness. So that's four. And then I would need one more, (laughs) which I don't know why I'm having a hard time finding it. Dogs. I love dogs. If I, I would be like a mom dog, but like how, how, how sad is it that like, whenever I get new followers, they're all like dog pages (laughs) (laughs) because they're hoping you follow them back. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's how, that's how people grow their dog pages. Um, <laughs> hysterical, you know, I think play around with it. We don't have to decide it right now, you know, see, cause, cause the next step is to take these five things and then put them out into the nine boxes. So yeah. you have your five things and then every, um, every nine boxes, you make sure you're hitting on one of them and then a couple of other things. So, um, so I think those are, I think those are good. I mean, maybe personal development for you right now is its own thing, like personal development and self-love because that is, you know, so much of the journey that you are on. So maybe you have kind of like a buffer flex one that you can kind of figure out as you go. Good idea. Um, Tina, do you want me to put you on the spot too? Sure. So I kind of did what um, Audrey did and made a list of sort of all the things to you guys are both ahead of the game pick pick and choose my five um so wife mom like family friends social network uh my career health and fitness um and then I've got things like choir my sorority volunteering and um activism um And I kind of put coach underneath like health and fitness, just Mm -hmm. kind of as part of that. So, yeah. Um, And talk to me about, I don't think I knew about um, like giving back with like sorority and then activism. So talk, talk about those. What is Um, that? So I'm, I'm the president of my, uh, of the local chapters house corps, which is like the landlord for the sorority. Okay. Um, So that's super fun. I did not know that. Yes. Um, it's something that, uh, so I've just been involved, like as a volunteer just for years, ever since moving to Colorado and became president three years ago. Um, so that's something that I do. It's not a huge time commitment. It's been a bit more lately, but like when we were having events in person, I would post pictures of like helping out during recruitment and helping at meetings and, um, you know, my role kind of shifts over time. Like I'm hoping to stop being house core president because it's a little bit too much um, and shift into something else soon. But so I work with that. Um, and then uh, in terms of like activism, just sharing content and like being present and volunteering and attending, you know, events and things like that and donations and just raising awareness for different causes. So why do you do both of those things? Cause like you're busy, you don't have time. Why do you I, do those? Um, great question. Um, I, I, I went to 
So I love my sorority and I went to my sorority's convention three years ago um, and it like changed everything. I totally drank the Kool-Aid and I was like, I need to do all the things. Um, and it just gives me a lot of passion to help like these young women that are starting out and they're finding their way in college. And I really see it as like a female empowerment organization. And I think it gets a lot of bad rap and I love being a part of, you know, just a positive influence in these women's lives. Like they need leadership and they need positive female leadership wherever they can get it. Um, and that's what I really like about participating. Love it. Now, what do you love about coaching so far? Uh, the same. The same. Yeah. You see so. what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> So I think one of your pillars needs to be mentorship. Okay. And, and what that does for you to be able to help somebody else do what, what you've done, e even in the smallest step. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and like, and, and always being a person who can learn something by doing, and then teach it to somebody else so that they have an easier time learning it than you did the first time. That's a really great point. I like that. So I think that could be a really nice pillar for you. Thank you. And it's one of the, it's one of the perks, right? Of being, mm -hmm. a coach. it's one of the reasons we all want to be coaches. And it's not one that a ton of coaches talk about. Like all the coaches out there are out there talking about income and, uh, being home with their babies and whatever else. And that's all amazing. But for working career-driven women, we have different reasons why we care, right? Um, and so I take this note for myself too. Like, I think we, we all need to talk about that more. I completely agree. Yeah. I mean, it, and it was something that I talked about um, in my like free group that I did with a few friends um, mm -hmm. that, like sharing this information and like putting a group together and having us all kind of talk about what we're trying to accomplish in our lives and like work through those steps. That was why I was doing what I was doing. And it was really fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we've got our, you know, we have our pillars, our brand pillars. Now I want you to think about who you're talking to, right? So like, you're going to put information and content out about these brand pillars, but like, you're not going to do it because people want to like, it, it's not a, it's not the Lindsay reality TV show or the Audrey reality TV show or the Tina show, right? Like people are going to come to your page less for like seeing what you're doing and more to learn from the things that you're posting about. So your five pillars, how do they matter to somebody else and who is that person? So think about the five things that we just talked about and think about who are you talking to? Um, and what I will, oh, yes, honey. Um, I hurt my foot. You hurt your foot? Well, can you go tell daddy that you hurt your foot, please? <laughs> Hi, real life. <laughs> <laughs> um, or you can come sit on my lap. Um, so who, like, who is, is that person? Right. So I'm um, okay. So we'll, let's break myself down here for a second. Right. Mommy, yes, honey. Yes. I can snuggle you right here. Um, somebody who's working, who is got big plans and like aspirations and knows what they want to do, but gets a little held back <laughs> by motherhood. So I definitely go after the person who loves being a mother, but isn't the like life's always rosy motherhood. Um, and I look for the, I look for the woman who is kind of struggling with that and wants to move from a life where they feel like they're surviving to one that they feel like they're thriving. And so that really is kind of like how I think about all of my content is to talk to that person, um, whether it's I'm talking about my kids or I'm talking about working out or anything like that. Does that make sense? Yes. 
So think about that for a second. And then once you've got kind of like that high level, because I will also say like, I don't just look for working women full stop. I work, I look for like working moms of two boys that are within two years apart that are in my same toddler phase of life because we have the most to talk about. I'm going to go on mute for just one second while I take care of Aiden, while you guys think about this. It's a full disaster over here. Neither child is asleep. <laughs> That's real life. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, tried to um, attract Gretchen to some alone time with new Picasso tiles because Jordan is napping. And I'm like, look, Gretchen, new, new toys to play with all by yourself. And she's like, the roof collapsed. You have to come help me. <laughs> You're like, oh, shoot. <laughs> like, uh, no, I'm not going to help you with magnet tiles. You can do it by yourself. Be an architect. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, so anyway, once I know then who I'm talking to, the lens that I think through is for the next week, what, it, what aspect of their life am I going after? So like, is this a week where I'm inviting to a challenge group? Because if this is a week where I'm inviting to a challenge group, I want to focus on their perspective towards fitness and health, right? Versus if it's not a week where I'm trying to fill a challenge group, I'll try to think of, I'll try to think more about their focus on travel or on mentorship um, to kind of like think about themes for the week. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Because then what that does is it allows me to think about what are their pain points. Um, because in, with any brand, what you're trying to do is think about how you offer a solution to a problem that they have through the things that you are a perceived expert in, right? Or a step ahead of them in. So um, for let's say a week, again, like a week where you're inviting to a challenge group that would be thinking through, okay, they are on the weekends without help. <laughs> Speaking from experience, hypothetically, <laughs> they're without help and trying to prepare for the next week, but they've got kids who need a lot of hands-on one-on-one attention they need to hear that these are programs specific for busy moms that are that way and that they can do this with their kids. Or if they are wanting to travel and they're just now getting their vaccines and they're starting to plan trips, they are going to need to know that these are programs they can do from a hotel room or they could get outside and do um, or something like that. Make sense?
And so kind of then how I continue to evolve this is I ask myself some questions because obviously like we're not necessarily focusing on all of this. Like, why are we building a brand to be like influencers, <laughs> like, like career influencers? Like my goal is not to have like a hundred thousand people follow me. I genuinely want to help people with this life solution that Beachbody has been to me because it has been that transformational. Like the fact that a health and fitness I, I say it out loud and it kind of sounds like obvious, but like a health and fitness workout solution is what I bought when I first started. And what I have learned through it is time prioritization, personal development, nutrition, like real nutrition, like not dieting, but genuinely how to eat, um, workouts that I can do from home or from anywhere, really. It just like, it completely changed so much about my life. And I love sharing that with other people. And that's why I care about what my brand is on Instagram, because I want to, I just want to help people who were in the same rut as I was. So when I think about my target, then I also think about who I was before Beachbody. What was I, before this solution came into my life, what was I struggling with? Um, and those were things like I had tried Weight Watchers. I had tried Noom. Um, I had paid for um, this ideal raw something, like another competitor thing. Um, what are things that you tried and didn't work? I had tried like the whole 30 a million times and always failed miserably at it. Um, what types of foods did you eat that made you feel guilty? Oh, baby. Hold on one second. Uh, no. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Um, He's saying Paul's not coming. <laughs> oh. Um, I I was the person who signed up for like Orange Theory or Cycle Bar and never attended the freaking class and wasted so much money. Um, I then also think about not fitness things. So like, where did I shop? Um, because especially as I was trying to cover up, um a lot of me, <laughs> um, where I shopped was very different than where I shop now. Mommy, um, hey baby, I've I need, got to do this. Mommy, I yes. need my mask. Okay. Can you go grab it? No, I don't know. Uh, how. Okay. Um, just can give me one second. Let me finish this sentence and then we'll go get your mask. Okay. I want you to. Okay. Um, where did I shop? I said that one. Um, who and what did you follow? So I was like, in a Instagram relationship with these two influencers who are from the bachelorette. I loved following them and like our lives were so similar. Um, and so I always still go and find people who are fans of theirs because just lifestyle wise, we kind of, they're my aspirational life person, I guess. Um, where were you spending your time when you were online? <laughs> what types of things were you looking at? Like, were you looking at travel? pages, maybe Audrey or something like that. Um, and then I get into what do people ask you for advice on? This is always one of my favorite ones. If you are, if you remember when you used to be able to go to a party <laughs> or out to dinner with friends, hey, mommy. what are the hey, types mama. of things that people always hey, ask mommy. you for advice for? Mama. Yes, honey. Um, when, when James wakes up, is it okay if we can go to the chicken park? Sure. Let's do it. But what when Dave wakes up and dad? Sure. Um, what, so what do people ask you for advice on? Um, what can you get on your soapbox about? <laughs> we all have like a couple of things that we're like, you know, throw in the towel. I'm going to, I can preach on this <laughs> for a few minutes. Um, or, you know, that you have like a pretty strong opinion on one way or another. That's not uh, overly polarizing, right? Um, what kinds of things do you find yourself jumping 
to give advice on. So like if you were scrolling your own social feed and somebody was asking for a recommendation, what are the types of things where you're like, I can't not give my opinion? Um, no, hey, mommy. Yes. Honey. They can't hear you because that one is, I'm seeing something. No, they can hear me just fine. And they can hear you too. But they're a little, um, but the, the rectangles are a little, little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so like for me, I love giving advice on um, potty training and I'm, I failed miserably at it. Like this one is still not potty trained, but for whatever reason, when somebody has a question about potty training, I'm like, oh, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. <laughs> um, so, so think through kind of those questions and those will all start to help you think about who your target is. And then what you can start to do is think about like, where would you meet somebody like this? Right. And so like, let's take the potty training one, for example, if I love giving advice on potty training, you better believe I search weekly the hashtag potty training and see if there's anybody that I can give some advice to and strike, strike up conversations that way. Um, and even learn, right. Because maybe I have advice on how to, um, get him to go number two on the toilet. Um, but somebody else might have advice for how to get him to sleep through the night without a diaper, which I haven't done yet, right? And so there's this immediate connection that can be made where I can add value, but they can also add value, which is then a relationship. Does that make sense? Okay. So then now I want you to think about specifically for kind of the things that we've walked through, where can you start to find these people? Um, so whether that's on another influencers page, would they geo check in to a certain place? Um, or would there be a hashtag that would match? So for instance, like, um, the potty training example, hashtag potty training, would be a perfect place. Um, I always go and look for people who geo check in to this look, it's called La Playa. It's a resort in Florida where I got married. And I always no, look. Mommy, yeah. you didn't get in a minute. And Sunday you're getting married. Okay. Right, mama? Sure. Hey, mommy. Mm -hmm. I got to talk. Hey, mommy. Yes. On Sunday you're getting married. Okay. God, I'm Sunday. super lucky on Sunday. On Sunday, right? Great. Right, yes. Mama? Correct. Yeah. Um, so there's this place called La Playa in Naples, Florida, where my family frequents. Our wedding was there on Sunday. And um, and whenever people she, check mama, in there, I'm able to mama, say, Oh my goodness, mama, you're at La Playa. That's mama, my favorite mama, place. Mama. I got married there. And then we can start up a, a conversation. Yes, honey. Um, me and your mom, um, she plays your dad, but um, Jeepa is still our, our grandfather. Correct. <laughs> right, Mama? Correct. Um, so that's how I use geotags. Um, or I also think about like foods that used to make me feel really guilty when I used to eat them, that now I don't feel as guilty eating every once in a while. So like ice cream. So there are, I can think of um, three different ice cream places that like really matter to me in my life. <laughs> One is this place called Graders in Cincinnati. Um, they've got the most insane chocolate chips. You can buy it at Whole Foods if you ever want to try it. But I look for people who have geotagged into Graders and I try to like strike up a conversation if they look like my person over the love of Graders. There's another one in Columbus, Ohio called Jenny's Ice Cream, same thing. And then here there's one called Sweet Cow that we go to a lot. Um, and so I'll just kind of see if people geotag in there and they've got kids, my kids' ages, um, things like that. Or if there are places that like I really love frequenting, like for example, we take Aiden um, 
to this park that's called the chicken park, but it has a real name. I'll look up the geotag for that park's name oh, and, hey, and mommy, see if there are people hey, there mama, that I could connect hey, with. Mommy, I know how to climb all the way, all the way, all the all the way up to the ceiling of, <laughs> wow. of the of the park. Cool. That's amazing. Yeah, has that big slide. Yep, and we're gonna go there when Davis wakes up, okay? Yeah. Okay. Um or, like I said, hey, I'll go to an influencer mama, page okay, and mommy. meet people who also follow Why? them. Yes, honey. Uh, there's only one more person for sleepy. Davis yes. for Bo. Davis for Bo. Yep. No, Davis. Um, so here's what I'll talk about, though. When we think about where to meet people, I find hashtags the easiest. And here's why. If you can find a good hashtag and somebody has used it, there's no coronavirus here. <laughs> so he's like... <laughs> um they're public they have a public account if they have used a hashtag and you can see them on the hashtag search page so um Audrey I think you were saying that like you were going to some influencers pages and it was taking you like an hour to meet 10 new people sometimes that's okay because there are 10 like really quality people because you you have that influencer in, in mind but if you can find a really good hashtag for you where you immediately see people who uh, like are people you would want to be friends with, save that hashtag and go back to it because there's new people every moment. So like this doesn't have to be super complicated. Like I will tell you, I use like three hashtags and I've built my entire business off of three hashtags and the well has never gone dry. Can I ask a question, Lindsay? Yeah. When you are talking about connecting with someone, are you saying that you would just like reply on their comment or you would follow them or you would do both or how would you initiate that connection if you found someone? Yep. So um, I, I, on a training one time, I heard something called the clam method, which is you see their post that they posted in the hashtag and you click into their profile and you comment on the post that that caught your eye. So um, you leave your two cents. And it's not like cute kid, because that's what everybody's saying. So think about what made you spark and tell them that. Like, oh my gosh, I was scrolling and I saw this picture and I just had to come and comment because I love the shirt your kid has on. Or I love that the way that you captured that sunset or I love whatever, whatever no, hey, caught mommy. your eye by hey, telling mama. them that you were scrolling and mommy. they stopped hey, your mommy, scroll. When the sun sets, it gets dark and the moon and the stars come up. Cool. Um, then, then that will make them want to come and look at your page. Do you see how that's different? Whereas if you yeah. were just like, cool picture, they would just scroll right past. So leave a comment that would make them want to check out your page. And then what I do is I like the photo. So first I comment, then I like, and I usually like the one after it too. So I'll like like two or three of their pictures. I try not to do more than three because other, I just think that looks scammy. Like I hate it when people come and like, like 10 of my pictures. Yeah. I'm like, but like one or two is like normal, right? It feels like, authentic. Authentic, right? I saw the one and then I saw another. And I genuinely look for like the ones that catch my eye. But real quick. Then what I do is I add them to a collection. So that's the A in clam. So the C in clam is comment. The L in clam is like. The A is add to a collection. Um, which that collection I call like. April friends or something like that, just so that I don't lose their page. So I'm sorry, is that something that you do within Instagram or you like have a spreadsheet where you add their profile? Oh, when I you say you save it. Yeah, I save you it. save. Got it. Yeah, I save it and I, I name it though, like April yeah. friends so that when I so that I can go and check back in on them without having to write their name down yet, because like we're just kind of establishing a relationship. Totally. Right. And then depending on what the picture was and how much I loved it, I, I might do the M today or I might do the M another day, which is message. So comment, like, add message. Um, for some things, it's really natural to 
message right away. So let's, let's take a beautiful sunset. For example, I might comment, oh my goodness, this is the most beautiful sunset I've seen in a long time. I was scrolling and it literally stopped me in my tracks. Thank you for sharing. I'll like it, add them to a collection. Then I'll go in message and say, that picture was so beautiful. Like, do you have a special camera or did you take that with your iPhone? Right. Got it. That, but that makes sense. Right. Yeah. If it was about like, their kid's birthday, I might not go and immediately message. Cause it's like, what do I have as a follow-up question? I sure. guess maybe even that could work. Like, let's say they had a birthday party and I love the zoo theme. Then maybe I would go and message and like, Hey, my kid's birthday is going to be in July. I would love to do a zoo theme. Where did you get the napkins? Okay. But it's just, it's a way to get into their DMs where you can actually start to ask questions about them. Got Got it. A, that makes sense? Is that helpful? Perfect sense. Um, but so sometimes though, I won't message right away. I'll like comment, like add. And then on another time when I've got a power, like I've got, let's say I have like five minutes where I'm sitting, um, waiting for the kids to come out of like their ski class today. And I'm just kind of like scrolling. That's five minutes that instead of scrolling, I actually go to my saved April friends and I only scroll their pages and I comment tap. like and message, or maybe I'll even follow them. Cause the ad could also be that you follow them. Okay, please stop. Mommy, is it okay if I can try the arrow? Um, yes, just one second. Just one second. I just got to find one thing. Um, okay. So this then is why it's important to think about your nine boxes, right? So, oops. Get down. So you are out there thinking about. I was trying to get up here. I was trying to get up Oh goodness, this is testing my patience. <laughs> Hold on just one second, honey. You naughty. Hey, Paul. <laughs> Help. I saw I saw him poke through into the doorway and then he quietly backed away. <laughs> right, because he doesn't like to be on video. <laughs> Okay. Um, I think Audrey, did you just ask me a question? Oh, yes, I can share it. Yes. We'll do a whole training on that, but yes. Um, but it's, it's not as good as yours. <laughs> yeah. So I use Google streak, but yeah, I'll do, I'll do like a whole Google streak tutorial. Um, um, sorry. What were we just talking about before Aiden? I'm so sorry guys. Oh, you're connecting with people, right? So you, you're going and you're, you're meeting people that you, like you genuinely want to connect with because you've thought about what you have a shared connection and that's kind of where you've met them. So now you're bringing them to your page where you need to make sure that they see like, oh, I'm so happy that she commented and liked and messaged me because like we're totally the same. So this is where your nine tiles come in. And so we talked about your five pillars and now you always wanna think about what's the story that the top of your Instagram is, is sharing with people when they come. So this is also why um, you'll see, so like, this is where like, um, so for me, I talked about how like my five pillars are like fitness, nutrition, mom, life, humor, inspiration. So when people come to my page, then I always want to make sure I'm sharing a recipe. I'm sharing a motivational quote that is just like super shareable and relatable. Um, a time efficient, a time efficiency tip, a transformation post. All coaches should have a transformation post every nine boxes. That transformation can be mental. It can be physical. It can be community, it can be any type of transformation that you've gone through. Um, I like to do a mom truth, a post about my kids, a post about why I decided to become a coach, what my vision for the future is and something about like work, the working mom struggle. Um, 
but sometimes those will flex based on who I'm connecting with that day. So like the other day I shared the fact that I love Tula products. So that was just totally natural and organic to me. I just really love Tula products and had just gotten this new shipment, but you can, you, you know, that day when I shared that story, I made sure that that day when I was connecting with people, I went and looked for people who also love Tula because I knew that by liking and commenting on their posts, they'd come watch my stories and see that I also loved Tula. So I kind of planted a seed in my stories and then went and found the people that would pick up on that seed that day. So same with like, if we go to the butterfly pavilion, I'll post um, stories and, and geotag the butterfly pavilion. And then I, that day when I work, I'll go and I'll find anybody else who's tagged in at the, at the butterfly pavilion to engage with. So that when they come and check out my page, they see the butterfly pavilion and they're immediately like, oh, that's something that we both do. Any questions on that? <clears throat> no, but you're brilliant. <laughs> so this is another thing, Tina, that I love about coaching is it has, um, it's made as a marketer, it has made me think about marketing at the most simplistic level. We don't do this for our brands. And so no. now I've gone to like my social team who runs our I am living you page. And I'm like, look, if the Tebow pack, cause that's one of our big um, affiliates, if they're getting ready to post something for us, which they're doing today, um, and we're going to share it why would we not have our community manager go and find a bunch of people who like the Tebos and just like all over their stuff so that then they get all these alerts from I am loving you. We know they're watching the Tebos. They then are going to see the Tebos talk about I am loving you and be like, whoa, Tebos just talked about I am loving you. I am loving you just liked a bunch of my posts. I'm going to go check them out. Yes. Sneak. This is just going to make me, it's like, it's going to make me so much better at my job. Right. <laughs> It's, it's amazing. It truly is amazing. Like it's made me, it's just, um, so, and then I'll also tell you guys that like, you guys will probably start getting served some advertisements from me, um, through Facebook ads. I'm playing around with Facebook ads at like a dollar a day because I'm trying to figure it out. That's advertisements, Tina, right. Or another huge part of what we do. And I know that they can work for us as coaches, like really cheaply, but I'm trying to figure it out before I teach you guys. So I want to say, if you get served an ad from me, do not be like, oh, I need to go do ads. If Lindsay's doing ads, no, I'm, I'm testing and frankly losing some money right now, <laughs> but I know I can figure it out. Cause this is what I do for my job, but it's made me so much better at my job. Like I went and talked to my media agency. Cause I was like, okay, I was actually filling my own funnel. And these are the three things I learned by running ads. Do we do this? Um, and so it just made me a much more present client as well, because it's just, it's marketing and it's most simple. Um, okay. So today, a lot of what we talked about is who are you, who is it that you are talking to? What is it that matters to them, what are their pain points? So um, the, the most basic marketing framework that every company will teach is called the who, what, how. So every time that you are sitting down to think about your week or thinking about making a post, think about who are you talking about or who are you talking to? What is it that they need to hear? And how are you gonna connect with them in a way that makes them realize that you have the solution that they need? And I will usually like literally write my posts in that order. So like I start it with like a question that is like, have you ever felt this way? Have you ever done this? Have you ever whatever to get to that who? Are you this person? What is it that we're talking about that matters? Whether that's struggling to find time to work out, struggling for um, 
the ability to lose weight, even though you are working out and eating healthy, but portions were wrong, whatever that is. And then you talk about how your group is the solution. We talked about a lot today. So I wanna make sure I leave the last five minutes here for questions. So first of all, I just, I wanted to say that I love the geolocalization idea. I just did it just from a travel perspective. I, I, I looked for the airport close by and then I already found like a couple of people that I could easily um, add to my collection. Um, and then my other question was when that, that, that might not, necessarily be specific to what we discussed today but specific specifically when you when you add people or when you approach people from for from a nutrition standpoint everybody is so different from a nutrition standpoint like how how do you do that and how do you bring in beach body into this into into this or into nutrition into into a challenge group or into an environment to discover these two amazing nutrition program how i'm struggling with that if, it, if it's like a like i, I just run a challenge water like it that, the, well, challenge water is easy like it's accessible to everybody right but like from a nutrition standpoint if i'm going to be running a challenge group with a nutrition from a nutrition standpoint i just want to make sure that i can incorporate beach buddy well and how to connect with these people that don't know about beach buddy yeah so I, so I think that, um, have you watched all the videos for both ultimate portion fix and to be yet? Not all, but majority of them for the most part. So <clears throat> I think what you'll, what you want to just think about is like making sure that you have, um, enough knowledge of both of them that you can talk about them, um, from a, and also I think try them each for multiple weeks so that you've got personal experience having eaten on the to be mindset versus having eaten ultimate portion fix. Um, and then go and look on the beach body blog for the ultimate portion fix, how like introduction in the to be introduction and see how they talk about it. So to be mindset is all is primarily pitched from Alana's standpoint about, um, intuitive eating and not, like letting go of the fact that people sometimes eat because of reasons other than hunger. Mm -hmm. um, whether that's the clock is telling them they're bored, they're angry, they're happy, they're celebrating, right? She, she wants you to eat when you are genuinely hungry. And that is why it's all about starting with water first because so often we mistake thirst for hunger, right? And so that's really her kind of bubble. Autumn, on the other hand, is much more about eating like an athlete and eating to match your workouts. And for, it's really great for people that you would talk to who would say like, I already eat healthy. Like I don't eat, I don't eat any processed foods, but I still can't lose weight. Their portions are probably off. Mm -hmm. um, and there's that balanced macronutrient, which is a great thing to talk to somebody who's already super educated within nutrition, right? Like somebody who's mastered the whole 30 is probably not going to love to be mindset because it's a little too loose versus they would love the notion of balanced macronutrients. But both of them are all about retraining you how to eat as opposed to having to be on a diet for the rest of your life. So typically the way I will approach it with somebody is the conversation will come up always, almost always first around fitness. Um, I want to look like you, how did you do it? How have you done this? And my, my response is always, I got over the excuses, right? I, my excuse was always, I didn't have time to work out. I found workouts that are 30 minutes that I can do with my kids, but more importantly, because the workout is only 10% of my day, I had to relearn how to eat. And I, these two programs that come with Beachbody, like made me realize that like, I was a 34 year old woman who did not know how to eat. 
Like I just didn't there. They taught us that crazy pyramid thing when we were in grade school. And that meant nothing to me. And I wasn't eating from any of that. Um, and so then I'll try to kind of connect with people on that, or I'll ask a lot of questions, right? I'll say, um, what do you struggle with when it comes to, um, a healthy lifestyle, working out consistently, eating healthy, uh, or both. And a lot of times what people will say to me is that they eat really good all week and totally derail on the weekends. Um, and so then this, the, then that notion of flexibility can come in. Is that helpful? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Okay. And so, oh yeah, go ahead. Just how long would you spend a day? So I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to say, Lindsay does that that way. So I'm going to do it that way. How long do you set on, on just reaching out and looking for other people? Yeah. So I will say, I always set, I, 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 <laughs> when I was first a coach, Dara, my coach would get on me because she would be like, did you invite people today? And I would be like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I didn't. And she would be like, well, why not? And what it came to was that I had put in my tracker in my head that I needed to invite 10 people every day. And the thought of sitting down to find 10 people to me took an hour. And, I, and so I never sat down to do it because I never had an hour to sit down and be uncomfortable for an hour. So then I said, no, you know what? Actually it was MBF that did this for me in the darn um, AMRAPs because she sets a timer, right? And you do as many rounds as possible in six minutes or four minutes, however long it is. So I was like, I'm going to sit down and I'm just going to do as many invites as possible in 10 minutes. I mean, I can be uncomfortable for 10 minutes and with the promise that it's going to get easier with time. Um, and so that is how, that's how I do it. So I sit down and I do, and I literally do the timer. And now I love this online digital tracker now because it has the timer right there. So I turn on the timer and for 10 minutes, I go and meet new people. So I just like scour, I pick one hashtag a day. So this is the other thing I'll say is I don't like jump around the hashtags. I pick one a day. And the reason is, so like, let's say today I was doing potty training and I, in my 10 minutes connect with five women and I do the clam, the comment, like add message and I get five done. If all five of those people come and follow me, that was a successful hashtag and you better believe I'm going to go fishing there again, right? You want to fish where the fish are. So if I spent my 10 minutes and I got a return for my 10 minutes, I'm going to go back. But if I had, if I had done like one person from potty training, one person from, I don't know, park date or whatever, I wouldn't know where they came from. Cause I'm not, I don't have that good of a memory. Um, and I wouldn't know which hashtags did really well for me. And so by doing one hashtag a day, that's how I found that for me, I've got like three hashtags that I can use every single day that never run out of people that follow me back. So 10 minutes meeting new people, hoping that they come follow me back. Then I do 10 minutes reconnecting with the people that I had added to that collection. So the first time I connected with them um, is like awareness. So they got to know that I exist. The second or third or fourth time that I connect with them, I'm building a relationship. And my whole goal in that second set of 10 minutes is to get into people's DMs and start a conversation. Because for me, once I've had three back and forths, you're probably ready to invite. So 10 minutes meeting people, 10 minutes connecting from my collection. Um, and then I go, and if, if in that 10 minutes um, I'm DMing with people, if I see I've had three DMs, I reclassify them from um, like April friends to ready to invite. So I would write their name down or add them to my tracker as like ready to invite. Um, but I don't necessarily do it that day. I just have added them. Then I go to my stories 
And what I do is you'll notice I always post free workout videos. So it's usually like video, video, still something like that. The reason I do that is I want to see who watches all three. If you just watched the first one and then you bounced, you maybe you hate me and you're like, Ugh, this girl sucks. But if you watched the second one and you watched the third one, you cared about what I had to say. So if you are still on that third one, I'm going to get in the inbox to you. I'm not going to invite you because that's weird. Like it's creepy to be like, hey, I saw you watched my stories. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to go and like, like some of your pictures or try to get into your inbox. Now, that being said, all, all bets off if I'm filling for a challenge group, right? So like I'm starting a challenge group tomorrow. If you've been watching my stories, I've been posting my three things on that third one for the last three days, every single person who's watched all three stories has gotten an invite from me. Hey, thanks so much for watching my stories. I'm sure you saw I'm starting a new group on Monday. Did you want any more information? So that's what I do with my power hour, which um, we are going to go through actually on Tuesday. I'm gonna post a video about how I do my power, hour. but it's not, I'm not gonna do it live. So people have to join. I'm just gonna actually do it and record it and then post it for you guys. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I have to bounce. I know. I got to. It was so incredibly helpful. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah. And then the other thing I'll be posting about this week is actually inviting you guys to some live power hours to do with me. So we'll actually go through this together um, cool. in the morning. So, okay. All right. Bye. Talk to you guys later. Thank you. Bye.